This video is going to be covering chapter 3, section 1, which deals with the atom. Now the atom is the most basic unit of matter, at least for most of chemistry. And the atom, the idea of the atom at least, goes back a few centuries to a man by the name of Democritus, who thought that all elements were made up of tiny indivisible particles, which he called atoms, meaning indivisible. So because they were indivisible, you couldn't take a tiny atom of, let's say, hydrogen, cut it in half, and then get two smaller half atoms of hydrogen. That's not how it works. However, what they figured you could do was you could take atoms, and you could combine them to form different compounds. For example, if you had two hydrogen atoms, you could combine them with an oxygen atom to form oxygen bonded to the two hydrogen atoms. And this is what is known as H2O, or simply water. So skipping way forward now to about the 1700s, once people had completely finished up with trying to turn everything into gold, they started to focus on the math of chemistry. They wanted to know exactly how much hydrogen and how much oxygen it would take to get this amount of water. Now as they studied these chemical reactions, and a chemical reaction is what it's called when you take you know a few different elements and react them to form another one or you take a complex molecule and split it up into its constituent parts but once they started the studying these chemical reactions very quantitatively they came up with a few laws now the first of these laws has come to be known as the law of conservation of mass and it basically states that in a chemical reaction like this where you react sodium with chlorine to get sodium chloride or just table salt that you sprinkle on your food the amount of mass you start with that is the mass zero at the beginning of the reaction has to be equal to the final mass that is no mass is created or destroyed so because you start off with say one atom of sodium over here and one atom of chlorine over here you can't lose either of these atoms in the reaction you can rearrange them though combine them together to get your table salt but you'll notice within this there is still one atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine the second thing they noticed was that chemical uh, compounds are always composed of a fixed proportion of elements that is for example within table salt it will always be 39.34% sodium by mass and therefore 60.66% chlorine by mass. It doesn't matter if you have a kilogram of salt or if you have a milligram of salt. This is true for either measurement. And this became known as the law of definite proportions. Now the law of definite proportions works great on elements that can only combine in one way, like sodium and chlorine. However, for elements like carbon and oxygen, you can form either carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. But when they measured the ratios of the masses of the constituent atoms within each compound, they found that, for example, if you have one gram of carbon, you get 1.33 grams of oxygen. Likewise, if you have one gram of carbon over here, you get 2.66 grams of oxygen. And you'll notice, as long as you keep one of them constant, you have some sort of proportion you can make out of, in this case, the oxygen factor. Because 2.66 over 1.33 grams is a 2 to 1 ratio. And this is what is known as the law of multiple proportions. That is, if two or more compounds are composed of the same elements, in this case that would be carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, then the ratio of the masses of the second elements, that is the ones that change, in this case that's oxygen, is always a ratio of small whole numbers, in this case two to one, but it could be three to two or whatever. So based on these newfounded laws of chemistry, an English uh, school teacher by the name of John Dalton proposed some assertions about atoms in the early 1800s. The first of which 
was that all matter is composed of the small particles called atoms, which was something even Democritus has said in ancient Greece. The second was that atoms of a given element are identical in size, mass, and other properties. That is, any atom of oxygen is equal to any ad other atom of oxygen, which is equal to all the other atoms of oxygen within the universe. The third assertion was that atoms cannot be subdivided, created, or destroyed. Now we now know that this is not entirely correct. However, what he was getting at was the law of conservation of mass. That is, that atoms cannot just simply disappear or reappear in nature. The fourth assertion was that atoms of different elements combine in simple whole number ratios to form chemical compounds. And this was based on the law of definite proportions and the law of multiple proportions that we just discussed. And the final assertion was that in chemical reactions atoms are combined, separated, or rearranged, which is something that we now know to be very true in chemical reactions even today. Now these assertions are pretty accurate as far as our modern uh, practices with chemistry go. For example, if you take a carbon atom and an oxygen atom and combine them to get a carbon monoxide atom, or a carbon monoxide molecule rather, uh, you'll notice that nothing is divided, rather these are just combined and you have the same amount of mass here, the mass of one carbon atom and one oxygen, as you do over here. It's just now they are combined together to form a different molecule. Similarly, the law of definite proportions can be explained by simply adding another oxygen molecule into the mix. And this is why carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide have a 2 to 1 ratio of the mass of oxygen because there literally is twice as many oxygens in a carbon dioxide molecule as there is in a carbon monoxide molecule. Now we now know that not all of these assertions are true. For example, atoms are actually not the most basic unit of matter. They can be subdivided into what are known as subatomic particles, that is things that are subatomic, smaller than atoms. As well, elements are not always identical in mass. They can vary slightly in the mass, which is something we'll discuss later on in this playlist. But the most important assertion is that we get from Dalton's theory is that all matter is composed of small particles called atoms, and that all atoms have different characteristics from e every other atom. That is, they differ in their chemical properties.